This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 25, Insurance Operations. Insurance companies provide insurance for individuals, firms, and government agencies. Insurance companies invest the premiums and fees received from other services until those funds are needed to pay insurance claims. Common types of insurance offered by insurance companies include life insurance, property and casualty insurance, health insurance, and business insurance. Chapter 25 includes six key learning objectives. First, to explain how insurance premiums are determined. Second, to describe how insurance companies are regulated. Third, to describe the main operations of life insurance companies. Fourth, to describe the main operations of the types of insurance companies. Fifth, to explain the exposure of insurance companies to various forms of risk. And sixth, to identify the factors that affect the value of insurance companies. Let's begin with setting insurance premiums. Insurance companies employ underwriters to calculate the risk of specific insurance policies. The companies decide which types of policies to offer based on the premiums they can charge versus the potential value of claims to be paid to policyholders. The premium charged by an insurance company for each policy is based on the probability that it will have to provide a payment to the insured or the insured's beneficiary and the potential size of the payment. When insured parties are more likely to experience an event that will require the insurance company to provide a payment, the payments will be relatively high. The premium charged is also influenced by the present value of the expected payment for the claim. In addition, the premium will contain a markup to cover overhead expenses and provide a profit beyond expenses. Premiums may also be influenced by the degree of competition within the industry for the specific type of insurance offered. When many competitors offer the same type of insurance, the premium is likely to be lower. Insurance companies tend to charge lower premiums when they provide services to all employees of a corporation through group plans. When assessing the probability of a condition that will result in a payment to the insured, insurance companies rely on statistics about the general population. They also need to consider the behavior of the policyholders that can increase the likelihood of claims. The insurance industry faces an adverse selection problem, meaning that those who are most likely to need insurance are most likely to purchase it. As a result of this adverse selection problem, insurance companies need to assess the probability and potential size of the claims made by people who obtain insurance rather than the claims made by the population in general. In this way, they can set insurance premiums sufficiently high to reflect the likely claims by policyholders. The adverse selection problem is also reduced when insurance is required for all members of a group. Once individuals are covered by insurance, they take more risks as they recognize that they're protected by insurance. This type of behavior is known as the moral hazard problem in the insurance industry. Insurance companies must consider that some people will become more careless after they become insured, which leads to more insurance claims, and therefore they must attempt to set premiums to reflect the higher risk of claims. The second key concept in the chapter relates to regulation of insurance companies. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners, or NAIC, facilitates cooperation among the various state agencies whenever an insurance issue is a national concern. The Insurance Regulatory Information System, or IRIS, has been developed by a committee of state insurance agencies to assist in each state's regulatory duties. The regulatory system is designed to detect any financial problems of an insurance company early enough to allow for a search for a remedy before the company deteriorates further. The more commonly used financial ratios assess a variety of relevant characteristics, including the ability of the company to absorb either losses caused by an unexpected number of claims or decline in the market value of its investments, return on investment, relative size of operating expenses, and liquidity of the asset portfolio. Regulators monitor these characteristics to ensure that insurance companies do not become overly exposed to credit risk, interest rate risk, or liquidity risk. Insurance companies are required to report a risk-based capital ratio to insurance regulators to ensure that insurance companies with a high exposure to insurance claims, potential losses on assets, and interest rate risk to hold a higher level of capital. If an insurance company files for bankruptcy, the insurance commissioner proposes a plan within the court system regarding how the assets should be distributed to the creditors. Before 1999, insurance companies were mostly separated from other types of financial services. In 1999, Congress passed the Financial Services Modernization Act, which allowed insurance companies to merge with commercial banks and securities firms. The Financial Reform Act of 2010 was enacted after the credit crisis to ensure the safety of the financial system, including the creation of the Federal Insurance Office, which is responsible for monitoring the insurance industry and providing recommendations to Congress about insurance regulations. Some life insurance companies based in the U.S. have expanded their operations internationally to areas where insurance regulations have been very limited in the past. 
these companies must comply with foreign regulations regarding services offered in the respective countries. Now let's move on to life insurance operations. Life insurance companies compensate or provide benefits to the beneficiary of a policy upon the policyholder's death. They charge policyholders a premium that should reflect the probability of making a payment to the beneficiary as well as the size and timing of the payment. Insurance companies have either stock ownership, meaning that they're owned by shareholders, or mutual ownership, meaning that they're owned by their policyholder. There are four common types of life insurance policies. Whole life insurance protects policyholders until death as long as the premiums are promptly paid. In addition, a whole life policy provides a form of savings to the policyholder in that it builds a cash value to which the policyholder is entitled even if the policy is cancelled. Term insurance is temporary, providing insurance only over a specified term and doesn't build a cash value for policyholders. With variable life insurance, the benefits awarded by the life insurance company to a beneficiary vary with the assets backed by the policy. Universal life insurance combines the features of term and whole life insurance. It specifies a period of time over which the policy will exist, but also bills a cash value for the policyholder over time. Life insurance companies obtained much of their funds from premiums, as shown in this exhibit. Annuity plans, which offer a predetermined amount of retirement income to individuals, represents a significant source of funds to insurance companies. However, the largest source of funds is derived from income earned from investments that are made with the insurance premium payments received. Insurance companies build capital by issuing new stock if they're stock-owned companies, and by retained earnings. They use capital as a means of financing their investments in fixed assets and as a cushion against operating losses. Their use of funds strongly influence life insurance companies' performance. Such companies are major institutional investors and commonly invest in assets including stocks, corporate debt securities, government securities, mortgages, real estate, and policy loans. This exhibit shows how life insurance companies generally invest their funds with stocks and corporate debt securities representing the largest asset classes held. This exhibit summarizes the use of funds by illustrating how life insurance companies finance economic growth. They channel funds received from insurance premiums to purchase stocks and bonds issued by corporations, and they purchase bonds issued by the treasury and municipalities, thereby financing government spending. Because life insurance companies tend to receive premiums from policyholders for several years before they pay benefits to a beneficiary, their performance can be significantly affected by their asset portfolio management. To cope with the existing forms of risk, life insurance companies attempt to balance their portfolios so that any adverse movements in market values of some assets will be offset by favorable movements in others. Life insurance companies interact with financial institutions in several ways, as summarized in this exhibit. Those life insurance companies that have merged with brokerage firms offer a wide variety of securities-related services, including offering mutual funds to investors. This exhibit summarizes the manner in which life insurance companies participate in financial markets. They frequently participate in stock, bond, and mortgage markets because their asset portfolios are concentrated in these securities. They also use the money markets to purchase short-term securities for liquidity purposes. The fourth learning objective in the chapter relates to other types of insurance companies. Property and casualty, or PC insurance, protects against theft, fire, liability, and other events that may result in economic or non-economic damage. Property insurance protects businesses and individuals from the impact of risks associated with the ownership of property, such as buildings, automobiles, and other assets. Casualty insurance protects policyholders from potential liabilities for harm to others as a result of product failures or accidents. A unique aspect of the PC industry is its cyclical nature. As interest rates rise, companies tend to lower their rates so they can write more policies and acquire more premium dollars to invest in hopes that losses will hold off long enough to make cheaper premiums profitable through increased investment income. As interest rates decline, the price of insurance rises to offset decreased investment income. This method of adapting prices to interest rates is called cash flow underwriting. The primary uses of funds by PC insurance companies are investments in municipal securities and corporate bonds. PC companies commonly obtain reinsurance, which effectively allocates a portion of their return and risk to other insurance companies. Health insurance companies provide health care insurance to households, companies, and government agencies. Insurance companies offer two types of health care plans, managed health care plans and indemnity plans. Individuals who are insured by a managed care plan may choose only specified health care providers who participate in the plan, whereas individuals who are insured under an indemnity plan 
can choose any provider of healthcare services. Insurance companies provide a wide variety of insurance policies that protect businesses from many types of risk. Some forms of business insurance overlap with property and casualty insurance. Bond insurance protects investors that purchase bonds from the risk that the bond issuers will default on their bonds. Mortgage insurance protects the lender that provides the mortgage loans in the event that homeowners can't cover their payments and default on their mortgages. Some insurance companies provide insurance on mortgages by taking positions in credit default swaps, which are privately negotiated contracts that protect investors against the risk of default on particular debt securities. Now let's look at the exposure of insurance companies to risk. Because insurance companies hold a large amount of fixed rate, long-term debt securities and bonds and mortgages, the market value of their asset portfolios can be very sensitive to interest rate fluctuations. When interest rates rise, the value of their holdings of long-term bonds and mortgages declines. If they need to liquidate some of these long-term debt securities to cover claims at a time when interest rates are high, they may suffer losses on those investments. Since insurance companies purchase corporate bonds, mortgages, and state and local government securities, they're exposed to credit risk. To deal with this risk, some insurance companies invest only in securities assigned to high credit rating. They also diversify among securities issuers so that the repayment problems experienced by any one particular issuer will have only a minor impact on their overall portfolio. Because insurance companies invest in stock, they're exposed to possible losses on their stock portfolios during weak stock market conditions. While they diversify among their stock investments in an effort to reduce their exposure, most stocks are very sensitive to general stock market conditions. Another risk faced by insurance companies is liquidity risk. A high frequency of claims in a short span of time could force a company to liquidate assets at a time when the market value is low, thereby depressing its performance. Property and casualty insurance companies are more exposed to liquidity risk because a single adverse event, such as a massive fire or hurricane, could trigger numerous claims by their policyholders. As the credit crisis intensified in 2008, many insurance companies that had invested some of their funds in mortgage-backed securities or in junk bonds experienced losses on their investments. Some insurance companies sold private mortgage insurance to offer protection on mortgages and had to cover insurance claims filed by creditors when homeowners defaulted on their mortgage payments. Before the credit crisis, American International Group, AIG, was the largest insurance company in the world. The company had sold credit default swaps that were intended to cover approximately $440 billion in debt securities against default. However, as many as those debt securities represented subprime mortgages, in 2008, AIG experienced severe financial problems when many of those mortgage-backed securities defaulted and ultimately culminated in the Federal Reserve bailing AIG out in September 2008. The last major concept in the chapter relates to the valuation of an insurance company. Just like other types of firms discussed in previous chapters, such as commercial banks, financing companies, and mutual funds, the value of an insurance company is the present value of its expected future cash flows, and as such, the value responds to changes in both expected future cash flows and the required rate of return used to discount those expected future cash flows. The change in an insurance company's expected cash flows is a function of changes in the payouts made to beneficiaries, economic growth, the risk-free interest rate, industry conditions, and management abilities. The payouts on insurance claims are somewhat stable for most life insurance policy companies with a diversified set of customers. In contrast, the payouts on property and casualty claims can be volatile for PC companies. Economic growth can enhance an insurance company's cash flows because it increases the level of income of firms and households and can create the demand for the company's services. Some of an insurance company's assets, such as bonds, are adversely affected by rising interest rates. Thus, the valuation of an insurance company may be inversely related to interest rate movements. Insurance companies are subject to industry conditions, including regulatory constraints, technology, and competition within the industry. An insurance company has control over its organizational structure and composition of its managers, who are tasked with making internal decisions that will capitalize on the external forces outside of their control. Thus, the management skills of an insurance company can influence its expected cash flows. In particular, skillful management is needed to determine the likelihood of events that could cause massive payouts to policyholders. As we've seen with other types of operations, the required rate of return by investors who invest in an insurance company is a function of changes in the risk-free interest rate and the risk premium. The risk-free interest rates are usually expected to be positively related to inflation, economic growth, and the budget deficit, but inversely related to money supply growth. 
the risk premium on an insurance company is inversely related to economic growth. It can also be affected by industry conditions such as regulations and management abilities. This exhibit provides a framework for valuing an insurance company. In general, the value of an insurance company is favorably affected by strong economic growth, a reduction in interest rates, and strong management capabilities. The common indicators of value and performance for insurance companies include liquidity and profitability. An insurance company's liquidity can be measured as the invested assets divided by the loss reserves and unearned premium reserves. The higher the ratio, the more liquid the company is. The profitability of insurance companies is often assessed using the return on net worth or policyholder surplus as a ratio and is calculated as net profit divided by the policyholder surplus. Although a company's net profit reflects all income sources and therefore provides only a general measure of profitability, another common measure for insurance companies is the underwriting gains calculated as premium income less policy expenses divided by total assets. When policy expenses exceed premium income, the net underwriting margin is negative. As long as other sources of income can offset such a loss, however, net profit will still be positive.